Well, Hope Community Church, happy birthday. Can you believe that we started Hope Community Church two years ago at Antelope High School? It seems like it hasn't been two years, especially over the last year uh, with uh, us starting our online service and all the ins and outs of 2020. But today we are two years old. So happy birthday, Hope Community Church. We are glad that you're joining us now in our digital lobby. Our service is going to start at 1045. And today at 2 o'clock, we have an in-person service on the corner of Willerga and PFE Road at Antelope Springs Church outside. We would love it if you would come join us today uh, for worship, to dive into God's Word, to pray together, and to take communion together. So come join us on the corner of PFE Road and Willerga Road today at 2 o'clock. It's going to be a great time. Bring the family out. The weather should be perfect. So I hope to see you guys today at 2. Hey, a couple announcements for you before our our children's ministry team shares is Easter's coming. Easter's going to be here on April 4th, and I want to highly encourage you to bring a neighbor, bring a friend to come sit with you on Easter Sunday. We are putting up a giant tent at Antelope Springs Church on the corner of Willerga and PFE Road and having an outside Easter service. Following the service, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt. There's going to be some bounce houses for the kids. It's going to be a great time. It seems like California California is opening up as people are getting their vaccines. Even Disneyland is opening up next month. And so the church is also meeting in person. We believe that God is calling us to meet in person and to encourage us to get together and to see each other's faces, even if there's a mask on, to really connect and to build the community that he wants us to start here in the Antelope area. So come join us on Easter Sunday. Come join us today at two o'clock. I guarantee to you that someone you invite will come with you. It may not be the first person you invite, but if you keep inviting people to come to church with you, someone is going to sit with you, and we hope that you invite many people to come join us on Easter Sunday. Hey, we're going to hear from our children's ministry team. There's going to be a song followed by a countdown. Then our service is going to start at 1045. Here's our children's ministry team. Good morning, Hope Kids. So glad to see you this morning. And hopefully I'll get to see you again later today at 2 p.m. We're going to be meeting outside at Antelope Springs. It's going to be awesome. So excited to see you and your family there. Um, this morning we are talking about part of the fruit of the Spirit, and that is patience. Patience is so hard for me. I am impatient all the time. We have to wait in so many lines and wait for things to come in the mail and just all the things we have to wait for. It's hard sometimes, but the Bible talks about patience and how important it is um, and how God helps us through that. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. Um, when I was a kid, there was this toy. It was really popular at the time. And basically it was a stuffed animal, but it had a code that was connected to an online video game. And if you typed in your toy's code, you could play with your toy on the video game. Super cool. Um, and there was one birthday or something where I finally got one and I was so excited about it. But I needed help setting it up online. And my mom, I remember, she said, oh, I'll help you in one second. I just need to do something. And I was like, mom, I, I want to do it. She was like, just one second. I'll help you in a second. And I was so impatient that and I just couldn't wait for help. I was like, I'll just do it myself. And so I logged on and I, I tried to do it, but I messed it all up because I wasn't patient enough to wait for help. And I never got to play the game because I messed it up because I was so impatient. Um, and I think a lot of us relate to that. Uh, let me give you a silly example to help us understand it even more. I have this glass of water and it's warm. I don't know about you, but I don't like warm water. I like cold water. So I want to put some ice in it. And we know how ice is made. Uh, some fridges can make ice on themselves, but you can also make it by putting water into an ice tray. And so I'm going to put my water in the ice tray. And, you know, normally you have to put the ice tray in the freezer, but I really want this ice right now. I want it so bad. And so we're going to count with me. We're going to count to 10 and we're going to see, we're going to, we're going to see what happens. Cause I think I want this ice so bad that I'm going to get it. Are you guys ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
My ice is ready. Didn't work out, did it? Uh, there are some things that we have to wait for, and ice is one of them. And so are so many things in our, in our real life that we're excited for. We have to wait for good things. There's a story in the Bible um, about King David before he was king. In uh, 1 Samuel 16, Samuel anointed him to be king. Super exciting. And if I was anointed to be royalty, I'd be super excited. But he didn't become king for 25 years. That's a long time. And there's a bunch of stuff that happened in between there. Um, David, the story of David and Goliath, when David killed the, the giant. You know, maybe David thought, oh, now I get to be king. But nope, he had to wait. And then later on, he became a musician for the king. He thought, maybe there's a way that I'll find a place here. Nope, he still had to wait. And actually, um, even as time went on, um, he became best friends with the king's son. And he became a really uh, famous warrior. And all the people loved him. He thought, maybe I'll become king. But no, the king actually, the current king, King Saul, actually hated David. And he tried to kill him. And you know, if I was David, I'd be thinking, God, I thought you wanted to be king. What's going on here? And David actually had to run away and flee. Um, and I don't if I was David, I'd be pretty impatient. I'd be pretty confused. I wouldn't know what's going on. But David actually wrote a psalm. It's Psalm 18. And he's talking about how God protects him. And he was so grateful that God protects him and keeps his promises. And he actually talked about in Psalm 18 uh how God would later fulfill his promise. And the Bible is full of stories of God keeping his promises. Um, it tells stories about people that were patient and received the promises. It talks about people that were impatient um, and still received the promises, but had to face consequences because of their impatience. And our life is just like that. Um, sometimes we have to wait for good things even when we know they're coming. Um, but God's timing is always better. Faster is not always better. God's timing is best. So how do we become patient? Well, the only way to be patient is to trust God, to turn to God. That's what David did. He had to trust God even when he was confused and didn't know what was going on. And that's what we have to do. So this week, I challenge you, uh, when you're confused, when you're impatient, turn to God and ask for help. Ask for patience, and God will give it to you. Hope you have a great week. Hope to see you later today. Bye, Hope Kids.
Good morning. Welcome to Hope Community Church. And again, happy birthday. Today is our second anniversary from when we launched Hope Community Church two years ago at Antelope High School. I, it doesn't feel like it's been two years, but it's been two years since we launched Hope Community Church out at Antelope High School. Some of you have been with us from the beginning. Other people have, have joined recently. And no matter where you started or when you started, we are glad that we're on this journey together. We, we first launched Hope Community Church two years ago because we believed that the Antelope area needed a, a church, a new church that was real. And with 
all the different programs and big churches that are out there, we knew that we would never be that. But rather, we would be a community of people who would be authentic and real with each other. We, we knew that we don't have all the answers. I absolutely do not have all the answers. I am on a journey, a spiritual journey, uh, with my eyes focused on Jesus Christ. But there are many things in my life that need to change. And we believe that as we launched Hope Community Church, that there would be people like you who would who would journey with us for a season or maybe even longer than a little season for a longer season. And and together on this journey, we would grow and you would grow. We would learn who God is together. We believe that when we launched Hope Community Church, that we would engage people who were different than us, who had different ideas, different cultures, different backgrounds, and that there would be this, this beauty as we came together with our differences and we belong together, that, that God would reveal who he is through that. And so we made a commitment that we would engage people in our community, that, that people would be, it would be okay if people belonged together before they believed. And we wanted to create this community as messy as it could be where real people on a journey together could engage with one another. Uh, If you've been part of Hope Community Church, uh, we are grateful for what God is doing in you and for how you've invested into us because together we believe we're better. I absolutely believe that we were made for something bigger than to live life all by ourselves. And together God is going to do something absolutely amazing in this community. And so uh, welcome to our anniversary Sunday. Welcome to Hope Community Church. I'm going to pray, then we're going to sing together, and we're going to dive into Luke chapter 10. And then I want to invite you to come out today for our in-person communion service at Antelope Springs. It's at 2 o'clock on the corner of PFE and Willerga. Uh, Everything's starting to open up in our state. And so I want to encourage you, come out in person, bring a face mask as we worship God even more. So let's pray. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Even when we haven't been faithful, you have been faithful. Thank you for starting Hope Community Church and allowing us to celebrate two years today. The stories that have happened over the last two years are incredible. You get the glory for that, Lord. God, I pray that you would allow us to understand that you are with us here and now. May we experience your presence this morning as we sing, as we pray, as we dive into your word. God, thank you that you are faithful and you are worthy. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let's sing together.
Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that they are never enough. And you came along and put me back together.
God loves us more than we could ever, ever fathom. I, I am grateful that we're able to celebrate two years of starting Hope Community Church. And today, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is share with you a passage of scripture that, that God gave to me a little over two years ago uh, when, when I knew 100% that he was calling my wife Sarah and I to plant Hope Community Church. Uh, as, as we go through this, you might hear some, some music in the background. We're at Antelope Springs Church right now, and things are opening up in California. Uh, just right behind me, there's a church service going on, and people are gathering together, and their worship is about to start. Hopefully that won't be a distraction to any of us. We get to have our in-person worship service today at 2 o'clock, where I hope you could come out and join us. Uh, where we'll, we'll worship God, we'll pray together, we'll share stories, look at God's word, and take communion together. So, so two years ago, uh, I, I knew that God was calling me to plant a church. I, I, I felt it within me that, uh, that, that God wanted my family to go out and to start a brand new church. It terrified me. Following God is sometimes one of the most terrifying experiences that you'll ever experience. And God calls us to, to follow him not just once, but every single day, go to him over and over again. And the thing that terrified me the most was if, if we were to, to start a new church, what happens if it doesn't work out? What happens if I quit my job and invest into people? How am I going to be able to provide for my family? What, what's going to take place? And I was reading Luke chapter 10, and all of a sudden, as I was reading this passage, all the fears began to melt away. And I heard God's voice speak to me. And I'd like to share with you Luke chapter 10 today. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. We're going to look at the first 12 verses. And, and uh, we're going to divide up the 12 verses. We're going to look at, at the first four verses uh, to start off with and see that, that followers of God are a sent people. They are people that have been sent on a mission. Followers of Jesus, all of them, God is sending to accomplish his mission. And then we're going to look at verses 5 through 12. And as we look at 5 through 12, I'm going to point out two strategies that, that Jesus points out as he's sending out his disciples. Two strategies that I believe apply today in today's world, where we could grab onto these strategies as sent people and watch God work in the hearts and lives of the people of Antelope, Citrus Heights, North Highlands, West Roseville, Alberta. As, as we go out, as God's calling us to go out, he is going to work. So, so read with me Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 1. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others, and he sent them on ahead of him, two by two, in every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, nor knapsack, nor sandals, uh, and greet no one on the road. So, first four verses. Uh, I, I'm sending you out. Let's, let's break this down a little bit. The first two words we see is, is after this. After what? Well, uh, if, if we were in Luke chapter 10, if we go the chapter before in Luke chapter 9, we see that God, Jesus sends out 12 disciples two by two. And then before Luke chapter 9, we have, any math major will be able to tell us, Luke 1 through 8. And in Luke 1 through 8, we see the ministry of Jesus unfold. Jesus comes down to this earth. He's born of a virgin. He grows up and he's living his life. And as he's living his life, he's calling people to himself and he gathers to 12. And the 12 uh, disciples of Jesus see Jesus go into the synagogues and heal a man who had a withered hand. And the, the 12 disciples of Jesus are, are able to see Jesus raise people from the dead. He's able to cast out demons. He's able to, to speak to a storm and say, be still. And the storm listens to him. Jesus is doing ministry. He's doing what the Father has called him to do, everyday ministry. 
And then we get to chapter 9, and what we see is Jesus is saying, hey, just as you've seen me do ministry, I'm sending you out to do it too. And we get to chapter 10, and instead of just the 12, in the, in the Hebrew way of thinking, when you see a number like 72, essentially what Jesus is saying is everybody. This isn't just a small group of people. This isn't just the varsity team that gets to go out. This is everybody, 72. It's, it's the masses. Everyone who's a follower of Jesus, I'm sending you out. I'm sending you to go. I'm appointing you to go. To go out ahead of me. Where you go, I'm going to show up. You're, you're going on ahead of me. I am going to show up. And when I was praying over this passage of scripture, knowing that God was calling me to go plant a church and terrified, didn't know how it was going to work, what was going to happen. All of a sudden, I felt God speak to me and say, John, you're going to go and I'm going to show up. I am going to work. It's not about you. It's about me. Be faithful and go. As we look through this text, I want to point out we are a sent people. And there's there's four things that I want to point out as as we go through this. The the first one is that uh, as a sent people, God has first commissioned us. Look at verse 1. As, as we look at this, it says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. The Lord has appointed. Have you ever been on, on, a, on a playground as a kid and you're about to play basketball or football? H- how do people pick teams? Well, if it's like what I grew up in in elementary school, there's like a line of people against the fence and the two biggest kids are captains and they go, I want that guy and I want that guy. I remember on the playground because my mom's 4'11", I didn't have a lot of height and especially in basketball, I was never picked first. I was the last guy appointed onto a team like, oh, John's there, I guess we have to take him. All right, we'll take him. Or I was the very first substitute where I would wait until someone got tired or winded, and then I could come in for maybe a couple minutes. I was the leftovers. But, but what we see in this text is that Jesus doesn't pick the leftovers. He is appointing, appointing everyone, the 72, saying, I'm choosing you. I choose you. I am going to commission you. You belong to me and my mission. Jesus is is calling everyone who desires to follow him. He's commissioning them individually and saying, you're on my team, buddy. You are on my team. It doesn't matter if you're fearful. It doesn't matter if you don't think you have what it takes. You're mine. You are my disciple. And as a disciple of mine, you're also going to go out. It's not just about how much head knowledge you know about me, but my disciples practically experience me when they go out and they share who I am. As they tell other people what I'm doing in their lives, they're going to experience me even more. The second thing we see is not only does uh, Jesus first commission his people, is Jesus is the starting place. Look at verse um, 1 and 2 with me. So he says, uh, go two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. I am going to show up in the places that you go. You're going to go on ahead of me, and I'm going to show up there, and I'm going to display my glory. And he sent them out and said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. God is in charge of the harvest. It's his field. He, he is starting with the fact that he loves the world and he is going into the dark places in the world to restore it, to redeem it, to call people to himself. And he's sending out his disciples, his followers on ahead to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is here, that, that the kingdom of God has come into their city, into their community. And if they have eyes to see and ears to hear, their whole lives could be transformed. Jesus has commissioned his followers to go, and he is the starting place. He says, you need to pray, pray, 
for the Lord of the harvest to provide. The harvest is plentiful. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to provide more workers, more people to go out into the field. I used to think, wow, uh, if only there were more people that were called to go. But now looking at this text, it, it seems like everyone's called to go. Discipleship is, is helping people to see who Jesus is, that he has come to this earth to save them from their sin, to transform their lives, and to give them a new purpose, to go out and to share the good news with others. Everyone is called to go out. And God is commissioning them, and he is the starting place. He's saying, this is my field. I own it. Pray that the workers come to collect the harvest because there is going to be a harvest. I am going to show up. Next, we, we see that not only is, is God commissioning his people, not only is he the starting place, but, but it's his field. He owns the property. He owns this world. He is the God of this universe. And, and the owner takes responsibility. We are his workers. We don't have to be responsible for how many people say yes to Jesus. All we have to do is be responsible to obeying him, doing what he's called us to do. And as, as we pray for people to come to know Jesus, he is going to change hearts. How, how many people forget or choose not to pray for the lost. Sometimes I am in that boat. But God, I've been praying for this family member for years. And it just seems like no matter how much I pray, they're not going to choose you. They're not going to, to follow you. And God is reminding me in this text, saying, the harvest is plentiful. Would you pray to the Lord of the harvest for workers to go out? Would you pray that I would change people's lives and, and to, sh to really help people realize that I am working in their lives and if they go and share that with someone, I'm going to change someone else's life. I think about extended family members in my life who are far from God right now. I've been praying for them. I've been praying for them. It just seems like no matter what happens, they are far from God. God wants me to continue to pray for them. Even if you prayed for someone in your family for the last 10 years, who's not to say that in year 11, they're going to come to know Jesus. And so we pray for people in our neighborhood. We pray for people in our families to come to know Jesus. And as we pray, we realize that maybe God might even use us to share the good news of the kingdom with the people that we're praying for. And finally, we see that uh, not only is, is God commissioning us, not only is, is, he, is it starting with him, and, and not only is it his field, but it's his strength and his resources. Look at uh, verse 4 with me. It says this. Sorry, verse 3. Go on your way. Behold, I'm sending you out in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Jesus is telling his disciples, as you go, you don't need to prepare a whole lot. You don't have to have everything worked out. Take what you have and go on ahead. I am going to show up. Take what you have and go on ahead. I'm going to be your strength. I'm sending you as lambs among wolves. There's going to be people who are going to push back against you who are not going to like that. But would you go and trust me? Trust me to show up. Allow me to be your strength. You don't have to worry about converting people. All you have to do is be faithful to share who I am, to share how I'm working in your life. Trust me and go. And not only that, but I am going to give you all the resources you need. You don't need to take with you a bag or a knapsack or an extra cloak or shoes, an extra pair of shoes. Just go. And I will provide all the resources you need. You could trust me. I'm going to show up. And I'm going to work in the lives of the people that you're going to minister to. I'm sending you to do the same ministry that I was doing. Will you be faithful and go? When I heard this a couple years ago, I'm going, how could I argue, God? How, how can I argue with this? Yes, of course I want to go. I want to go into Antelope because in the Antelope community, there are over 50,000 people. 
And there's only four other churches in Antelope. And those four churches are reaching less than a thousand people a week. There are so many people that need to hear the gospel. There are families that are moving into the city of Antelope. In fact, uh, I didn't know this two years ago, but I know this now that we're going to see 700 new homes coming into our community. The average age in Antelope is 32 and a half years old. There are young families moving from the Bay Area into the Antelope community to settle, to raise their kids, and to, to really flourish. They want to flourish but they're going to need people to share hope with them. They're going to need people to share Jesus with them. And there's only four other churches. Antelope needs more churches to come in. And so if we go and do the ministry that Jesus has done, he is going to use us and he's going to change this world. One of the stories that we first started with was this dream that a boy named Andre, a middle school child, who had three sisters being raised by a single mom would come to know Jesus. This was a, a fictional story. This was a story that we hoped would happen. And as we started praying for kids like Andre, because Andre wasn't real, uh, we, we started praying that we would do these park events. And during the park events, we would connect with kids of all ages, especially middle school students and high school students that we would allow opportunities for them to share and to talk and listen to them, that we would invite kids over to our house and, and families over to our house and share meals together. And over a conversation of a meal, that Jesus would show up and we'd be able to ex ex share with people that Jesus has changed our life. And over the last couple of years, um, Andre hasn't come to Jesus yet, but there's a boy named Andre who came to a couple of our park events and he had three sisters, praise God. Uh, his story is not done yet, but there's a possibility that God still may change Andre's heart. He may still change Andre's family's heart. But we've been able to do just what we set out to do, to invite people, to invite their neighbors over to their home, to share a meal, to talk about life, and wait on God to provide opportunities for the gospel to come up, for, for people who believe in Jesus to share Jesus has changed my life, and he could change your life too. I said we would look at this text and see that we are a sent group of people. We are a sent group because God has commissioned us. We are a sent group because it starts with Jesus. Jesus came from heaven to earth. He, he showed us the way to do ministry. He did it first, and as he performed what the Father wanted him to do, he's calling us to obey and to do ministry. It's his field. We don't have to take responsibility for people saying yes or no to God. We just have to take responsibility of being faithful to be his, um, his witnesses. God will give us the strength that we need. He will give us the resources that we need to go. We just need to trust him. Then we look at the second half of this, 5 through 12. And I want to look at a couple strategies that, that Jesus is giving his disciples as he's sending them. Strategies that I think apply to us today. Verse 5, whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to your feet, we wipe against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it'll be more bearable on the day for Sodom, than for that town. The strategies that we see, two that I'm going to point out, is that hospitality changes the communities. Now, this is a hospitable community to begin with, and the United States is not. There are two completely different cultures. The United States is not typically a hospitable community, where Israel is. They, it's part of their culture to invite people into their homes, to live life with their neighbors, and to, to share food, to share what they have, and to share resources. In the United States, we are an individualistic society. I need to provide for myself, take care of myself, take care of my family. You're on your own. 
But the gospel is more than just me. The gospel's calling us to love other people, to share meals with other people. We may have a harder time with this than the people in Israel because it's not in our DNA to love other people like this, to come into a house and to stay with people, to stay with awkward, needy, weird people, right? There's always going to be awkward, needy, and weird people. And if you say that, uh, no, people are not awkward, weird, and needy, then you're probably the weird, awkward, needy one. Everyone knows someone who's awkward, weird, and needy, and God's calling us to be hospitable and to share meals and to share life with these people. The first strategy I want to point out is Jesus says, hey, don't talk to anyone on the road. The people on the road are going the opposite direction. I don't want you to get distracted. I want you to go to where I'm going. Stay focused. Go there. And when you get there, say, peace be upon you. Find people of peace. In in your normal day, everyday life, find people of peace and have normal everyday conversations. If, if they are a person, a son, or a daughter of peace, the door is going to open for you to share about Jesus. The door will absolutely open for you to share about Jesus. And so when you go and you are eating a meal with someone, whether you invite someone over to your house or you're going over to their house, in normal everyday conversation, you're going to find out that some people are suffering right now. You're going to find out that raising kids is not what they thought raising kids were, was going to be like. That the, the relationship issue within that home, that there's going to be ups and downs. And when people are hurting at their job, when they're hurting because this society right now just seems oppressive, it seems like people are itching to, to get out of this pandemic and to, to experience life again. They're waiting for the new normal. When, when people are going through tough times, there is an opportunity for people of faith to say, hey, in my household, when, when we're suffering, when times are hard, we go to God. Can I, can I pray for you? Can I pray for your relationship? Can I pray for your kids? Can I pray for your work experience? Can I pray that uh, with you that, that God is going to bring this new normal faster? Is that Okay. From my experience, when when I've had that opportunity to ask people, can I pray for you? No one's ever turned me down. There there might be like, I don't really believe that, but sure, go ahead. Or I don't want to pray right now. You could pray on your own. But everyone that I've asked that to, everyone has said, yeah, would you? And many times when I ask that question, it's followed up with tears where people go, you would do that? I, I, I would love it if you would pray for me. If, if things are going well at someone's house or at your house and you invited neighbors over and they're talking about the job promotion that they got, they're talking about how their kid made honor roll again and there's all these good things that are going on. What a great opportunity to say something like, wow, it really seems like God is blessing you right now. Yeah, when, when God works in my life, yeah, I see these blessings too. God is blessing you right now. Praise God for that. And to share the opportunity to communicate about Jesus, to share what God is doing in your life through normal, everyday conversations. Open the door, find people of peace to share Jesus with. The second strategy that, that we see here is to have an eternal perspective. You know, when we get to the, to the end of this, uh, let's look at uh, verse 9. It says, uh, verse 8 says, eat whatever the people give you. Verse 9 says, heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. When, when we read this and say, heal the sick, what do you think that means? Well, maybe it means what it says, that we're to heal the sick. That, that we are to go and to, to meet our neighbors. And when we hear that there's struggle and pain and sickness, we are to provide healing. We are to pray for people. We are to trust God that he is going to show up. God is supernatural. If, if you can't believe in the supernatural, then you will never believe that Jesus rose from the dead. God is supernatural. He could do things that, that blow our mind. And we need to trust that because he's eternal, because he's supernatural, he is going to show up in everyday situations. And so with faith, 
We believe as we're witnessing to our neighbors, as we're inviting people over to our house and sharing a meal, being hospitable, that God is going to show up with power. And we trust that God's going to work. We, we don't pray because um, we want the power. We pray because we want God to reveal his power. We want to see the kingdom. And we pray that the kingdom of God comes into this home. We pray that the kingdom of God shows up even in the sickness, even through the suffering. We have an eternal perspective. And towards the end, we, al- we also see that if, if the people won't receive you, if the whole town doesn't receive you. You're to keep going until you find someone of peace, but if no one is able to receive you, it says that you are to, to wipe your, your, your feet off and wipe the dust off your feet. I used to think, man, that's pretty hard. What? You just wipe your feet off and go, oh, curse you. But that's not what it says. It says, if people are not receiving you, yeah, you wipe your feet off. You, you, there's a visible sign of, of dusting off your feet here. But you say, nevertheless, know this. The kingdom of God has come near. You're taking one last stretch and saying, I really would hope that God changes your mind. I really hope that God changes your heart. You, you are far from God right now. But this life isn't it. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus is coming and he wants you to come to him. He died on a cross. He rose again. He's given you life. You can receive his grace right now. And if you're not ready to do that today, I hope you're ready to do that soon because the kingdom of God is here. It is near. You can receive this right now. And there's going to be a judgment day where everyone will stand before God. And you will be asked, hey, how did you live your life? And we can't say, well, I was better than this person or that person. God's standard is perfection. When you receive Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you're taking not your righteousness, not your acts that were good, but Jesus' acts that were great, his righteousness. You, You receive that instead of your own and saying, I am part of the family of God because God has appointed me. He has chosen me. I have accepted the grace of Jesus Christ. And when you have an eternal perspective, you will know that God is calling you to go and to share his love with other people. If you have an eternal perspective, you will know and have a heart for the people who are far from God. I think so many times we, we look at people who oppose God and we hate them. I, I sometimes will watch the news and go, man, this world is so corrupt. This world is so evil. There's all these bad things that are happening. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says God so loved this world. This is his world. He loves the world. And he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. And who shall ever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves this world, and he's calling us to love this world too, and to go into the world and to be his witnesses, and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. When we go, God's going to remind us that he's doing the work. The harvest is plentiful. There is going to be a harvest. Many who hear what you have to say are going to believe in Jesus. So we need to pray for workers. Pray that Hope Community Church is not about a building. It's a people that love Jesus, that go out and to share the hope of Jesus Christ with others. Let me pray for you. God, as as we celebrate Hope Community Church today, two years, would you remind us that you're calling us to be a sent people? Would you give us the boldness and the courage to be people who, who follow you and love you who are not ashamed of the gospel. Would you help us to communicate hope to our neighbors, our family, our friends, the associates that you have put in our life? And God, would you change our community? Allow us to be hospitable people who never shy away from proclaiming the good news that Jesus loves our neighbors. He died for them and they could have eternal eternal life by believing in him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching with us today. 
If you would like to give to Hope Community Church, you could do that by going to our website at www.hopeantelope.com. Uh, hopeantelope.com slash give. Uh, you could give to the mission of Hope Community Church, the mission of God. Would you join us today at 2 o'clock on the corner of PFE and Walerga as we worship God together, dive into scripture, share stories, and take communion together? I hope to see you guys today. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.